International Consortium, that is a Global AI Ethics Network for Social Good, which was started just six months back. Uh, and uh, the decision to start to initiate such a consortium was taken last year in one of the conferences that has been organized by University of Hyderabad on AI ethics. And there was a proposal to have such consortium. So uh, with the help of the colleagues from all over the world, we could able to have established this consortium. And we are, this, the aim of this consortium, this is an informal uh, discussion platform where uh, we can share our uh, research findings and also work out, if possible, bilateral, multilateral collaborations uh, on AI ethics and different aspects of AI ethics. And this is the first talk, first uh, event that is being organized. And uh, I am very much thankful to Professor uh, Alfredo Ronchi uh, from University of Milan for kindly agreeing to, who is my uh, long-term friend, uh, for kindly agreeing to preside over this talk. And of course, uh, big thanks to uh, the speaker who has agreed, uh, that is Padma Shri, who has, she is a global leader of, in Capgemini, who has been working on AI, AI ethics, and the data science, big data, etc. And uh, now uh, I request Professor Alfredo Ranchi from University of Milan to uh, preside over this talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Rao Prabhaka, good friend of mine. So here you are. And I think it will be very interesting to hear from Padma Shri the insights in the field of uh, AI and ethical issues and the way we have to establish a trust relationship with AI. By the way, we are actually involved in a project proposal for the European Commission and basically exactly in this area. So it's quite interesting. So to hear some more from another expert. Um, Padma Shri Shagritaya, I hope I pronounced it correctly the name. Uh, yeah. She has a long career, 26 years uh, in different organizations, and now is in Capgemini responsible for such kind of expertise in the field of ethics and, and AI. So I would like to give the floor to Padma Shri to have his own speech and his own contribution to this interesting meeting. So please, the floor is yours. I don't know if there's a specific time limit. Uh, so I will kindly ask to Professor Rao if there's very, a time frame to be respected or not. But anyway, uh, she has the floor, please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Alfredo. And thanks to Bakar Rao for uh, this opportunity. It's, uh, it's my, uh, you know, I'm just sitting amongst the most honorable people and it's my pleasure to be in front of all of you. So thank you very much. Uh, is there a time limit, uh, Professor Rao? I think uh, half an hour is what we could plan yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, half an hour. If you think it is sufficient, okay, half an hour. Plus minus five. Yeah, all because right. it was written one hour, but I suppose there is a time for questions and answers. So, okay, good. Okay. Half an hour is fine. All right, so I go with that. All right, so I was, um, you know, uh, I hope my um, deck is visible to all of you. I'll just go on a presentation mode and uh, if somebody can confirm to me that it is all fine. Yeah. All right, okay. So I was trying to think, uh, you know, what do I present to this August uh, uh, people who are attending this one, uh, this call and, uh, you know, figuring out, you know, what is right, what is not. Um, then I thought, you know what, many of the things that I may be talking about is something that all of you would know, right? Uh, given many of you are in this field of AI, um, and, and that's what I'm hearing from the introduction quickly from uh, Professor Rao. Um, I thought, you know, why not talk a, talk a little bit about, you know, what kind of a process or what kind of a framework do you set up within your organization? Um, when you really want to ensure that 
uh, you steer clear of all these ethical dilemmas, if I can call it, right? So I, I wanted to call this, you know, how not to get ent entangled in the ethical dilemmas when building an AI system. Um, and uh, it doesn't mean that you uh, evade <laughs> ethical dilemmas, but how do you clear steer of it and ensure that you're walking the right path, right? So that is the, that is the thought process which I thought will be appropriate. And um, as I said, uh, many of the thoughts on, uh, you know, I would set up set the context right in the initial slides so that we are all on the same page. Um, it's a practical vision. Um, it is our point of view. Um, you know, uh, there could be pluses and minuses, but please forgive me as I move forward. And maybe you could also talk about your experiences as we uh, towards the end of this uh, discussion. Um, so this is how I thought I'll structure the whole uh, thing, uh, you know, first set the context uh, in terms of what I mean by AI ethics as hopefully is the same as what you all are thinking uh, as well. And we, you know, as Capgemini as well, have set up some seven principles. Again, it is nothing uh, 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 chattering, but it is definitely, uh, I think we have covered all aspects of it. So we th I thought I'd cover that as, uh, cover all the seven uh, principles or the pillars. Um, and then, you know, move on to trusted and ethical AI. How do you build it? Uh, what are the various constructs that one should think about when you're actually going ahead and uh, building uh, AI solution, uh, right? And then what are the various other references and things one could go behind uh, that I thought were interesting and could be of inter interest to all of you. So this is how I thought I would structure this whole thing. Um, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm going to go on a monologue for some more time, and then we'll keep the question answer session if that is fine with all of you. Yeah, I see Alfredo shaking your head. So thank you very much for that. Uh, and then we could, of course, you could you could point down, uh, you know, write down your uh, discussion points, and we could do that towards the end of the session. All right. Now, you know, what are the dilemmas, right? So there are many um, uh, frameworks, many many ideas, thoughts that are out there. Um, again, whatever I'm telling here is not uh, anything uh, absolutely new. But I thought it is, these are the angles with which one should, one uh, can think about, right? Um, and, and, and then set the context, right? Um, let me start from these, uh, there are about seven I tried to list down, I, uh, there could be more, but in some form or fashion, I think it will cover all of what I'm really wanting, what I'm thinking about, right? Um, automated decisions, that is fundamentally why AI is built today, today, right? Uh, I'm not going into AGI, which I will come in a little bit. But today, most AI um, builds are towards automating the decisions for human, right? Or augmenting the decisions to be very more appropriate. And what can go wrong in this? It can be an algorithmic bias or a data bias that can creep in. Um, many of you know already. The difference is very, very, very subtle. But, uh, you know, you create the algorithms, you create your uh, models based on the data. Um, if there, have, there are inherent uh, biases which are there within your data in the form of, um, uh, you know, supporting one section of the society as against something else, uh, which could be gender, which could be ethnicity, blah, blah, blah. But your output, which is your model, will also carry the same kind of bias and you truly want to, truly want to avoid this as you move forward into the world of AI. And there is this algorithmic bias itself, which is uh, which is the creator's uh, bias, you know, uh, the person who is actually writing it, and which can just move into the code form of the uh, biasness. And sometimes remember that the underlying uh, data bias can get amplified because of the code bias that one can one kind of creeps in. So that is something that one should fundamentally take care of, and it is here and today, right? Um, and then I move into the slightly. Uh, slightly, uh, I wouldn't say future, this is also here and today, autonomous machines. Uh, more than here and today, you're talking about, we are talking about the drones, we are talking about the self-driven cars, so on and so forth. And I'm sure all of you know about those questions in the mind of an autonomous machine uh, on the decision making of, you know, what should one do against another, right? Should I hit the target or not hit the target? So I'm not going to delve too much, uh, dwell too much on this uh, uh, section as most of us know what it is, um, and then move on to the others. Now, ethical data sourcing, this is a concept which is picking up, right? When you search on um, ethical uh, uh, dilemmas, uh, this is not something that crops up quite a bit, but I do think this is extremely important for us to 
think about. Um, I will be talking about, uh, you know, some of the examples, but as many of you would know, um, today, many of the powerful AI systems or AI algorithms that are out there, which we all take and, you know, beat the GPT-3s of the world and so on and so forth, everything scrapes the internet, right, end to end, and then creates the algorithm or, 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 the, or, the, or, the, or the model that eventually runs, right? Is this ethical? Are we taking the data, the right kind of data, which is um, which is approved by the users uh, for the purpose of why it is being built? Is a question mark. More than just the you know uh, language models, I think um, uh, the 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 models which are based on the videos, the models which are based on the images, are far more um, uh, uh, you know uh, questionable in my mind. Um, you know, in terms of you know, whether the use of that uh, picture or uh, video uh, into building the ultimate model was appropriate or not is a question that one should think and answer. I'm, I know as I talk that there are many, many, many algorithms and models out there in the, in the, in the, in the world, which is not respecting any of these, right? So uh, there is, but, but, then, but then this question has to be answered by somebody or someone at some point in time. So let's park this, but this is a dilemma that one should one should think about when you're actually building it for a purpose. Exploitation with AI, uh, these are the questions, right? Whether, whether the AI system should be uh, surveilling uh, what it should be surveilling. I was uh, also reading about the new ones where, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, you know uh, even recently, as recently as in the wars and everywhere, we are using this AI systems. Should we be using it? There are there are governments there are uh, which are using this for the purpose of surveilling their uh, their uh, citizens. Question mark. I'm leaving it there, not to get too political about it, but I'm sure all of you understand. And then this whole thing of you know the whole uh, world moving towards the singularity or the artificial general in general intelligence. I know there is a lot of study that is going on. Uh, one of those, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, neuromorphology, if I'm right, I'm using the right te uh, technical word, I think, is, uh, is about, you know, moving slowly and steadily towards this world where uh, a machine is capable of human level understanding, right? When this is happening, you know, what is ethical, etc., is a big question that all of us have to think through. But that is, again, I would say a little futuristic. So, less thought through. I'm not going to get into that details. And then, of course, you have uh, societal impacts, uh, then the robot ethics, I'm, again, too complex to get into. And then, most importantly, sustainability. Now, this is, this again is less talked about, but I'm sure all of you here would already be knowing about what I'm saying, is the kind of models that we are creating today using tons and tons and billions and billions of data sets to be able to do what it is supposed to do? Is it using the resources in a more uh, sustainable uh, or answering uh, you know, the carbon footprint requirements in a more responsible manner? Is a question that we all ask, have to ask. Of course, one should also evaluate between what it is built for and what it is doing. Maybe the uh, reason what it is used for is much more going to help us in the long term with respect to sustainability as against the resources that are used to build these models. But again, questions and dilemmas that we'll be uh, coming to, right? So that is where I thought it, I, I might have spent a little more on this context setting slide, but I will, I will, I will catch up, right? And then again, I did touch upon all of these aspects on this impact on the society, impact on human psychology, uh, trust, uh, you know, it has got ethical dilemmas have impact all over. Sometimes it is visible, sometimes it is not visible. Like in the case of psychology, human psychology, I, you have no idea how uh, your deep fakes can go and impact the, uh, you know, uh, person who's actually talking about, right? Or the data that we have used, which I was talking about in the earlier slide, how could one, it impact a person who has been in some form or fashion used for the purpose of the output AI? Many of these questions, right? So the trust and fairness and blah, 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 right? So this one has to have all of these questions in mind and the ultimate impact when you're actually building a AI uh, solution. Uh, I'm, I'm using loosely all of these things of, you know, algorithms, models, and then ultimate AI solutions, but I know 
all of you understand. So I'm going to be a uh, 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 treading a path a little loosely here, but uh, I, I'm sure all of you understand the intent from where I'm coming from. Now, having said all these things, right? So, what what could one classify or define as you know um, code of ethics, right? Um, robust and safe AI. I'm starting from the right side corner, right? Um, this is fundamental, I thought, right? Uh, when you're building an AI system you should ensure that you have a respectable failure possibility of the AI system, right? To make it absolutely safe for people who are using it. At any point in time, it should be, you should be able to pull down the system, right? It should be, it should be safe in every form, security, uh, in the form of accuracy, all those aspects to be taken care of. We'll talk a bit more about this as we move forward. Sustainable AI, I think I did touch upon it. I've given examples and therefore we should be mindful of uh, uh, the resources, uh, the limited um, uh, resources which can impact the uh, environment uh, in mind when we are building these AI solutions and the trade-off between what we are using to what we are impacting. Fair AI, I did touch upon this. We all know about it. Um, I'm going to go on the, uh, you know, okay, yeah. So AI respectful of privacy and data protection. Um, we talked about it. Uh, privacy, again, a lot because many of us we know very well about uh, you know the social media influence and you know also the digital footprints that uh, we as consumers uh, and uh, you know give data to the companies which are reaching out to us so we should be cognizant of that um, controllable with uh, AI, with clear accountability ai right so i'll talk all more about these aspects because i think these are fundamental to how you design uh, you know the ai systems Keep it transparent and explainable. Again, this is something, the three things that I'm going to talk a bit more about um, with AI carefully delimited impact. I'll come to that. Okay, so now let's decompose all of what I just said, right? So uh, double click and talk about it a bit more. Fair AI, um, many aspects to it. Uh, we also from Capgemini do a fair amount of research in this and we also have uh, solutions that accelerators that we've built to uh, help our clients, uh, you know, kind of figure out uh, whether there is a bias incorporated into your model, but set aside, what are the kinds, right? So there is a demographic and uh, statistical parity. Uh, many of you, again, I, I, I will know what I'm talking about, but then have you used the right um, uh, sample of the data uh, to be building your models uh, so that you have not left leaving behind any particular section of the society um, because you know the model has to be fair it has to be a, a, a meaningful representation of the population you can't build on the population nowadays of course models are built but then uh, typically it's from the past data and uh, you know systems like fraud detection etc etc one has to be careful equal opportunity equal accuracy these are two important things um, again to ensure that you don't you give the right opportunity to the people who are within right the positives if you can call it right correctly selected by the model even when you're running it on an out of population out of sample uh, cases right and how do you ensure that you know the correct classification and etc happens and it is accurate again as i said both pre and post uh, uh, running the model Fairness through unawareness, right? You don't even know what is wrong with the whole thing. How do you figure this out? So all of these, right? So very careful, especially in especially in models which are going to be treating one section, one person, or like the fraud detection models, like the credit models, and so on and so forth. One has to be really, really careful. AI respectful of privacy and data protection. There are what I try to do here are a few things, right? Uh, so on one side, uh, you know, Clearview, Clearview AI is one, um, uh, uh, I, I'm trying to think of the right words to use there, um, is, a, is an organization which uses all of the consumed, every single facial recognition possibility on the web today and is used for surveillance, right? And it is used by law, enf in law enforcement agencies already. Now, which is for the good as well, right? Many a times the outcome or the usage of it is for good. But again, as I said a little while back as to what should we do, right? And then the AI usage of immoral intent, that is clear. You don't have a dilemma there. It is clearly, you know, a deep fake. So thank you. We need to fix it. Clear about it, right? But the other point where I was talking about, you know, 
for good versus use, right? Is something that one needs to take. Uh, there are a few data protection and privacy uh, uh, techniques which I thought uh, are picking steam. Um, whilst I'm also going to, whilst I'm be talking more about the framework, I thought I'll also uh, put in a few technicalities that we're also doing research on, like federated learning, where we don't really touch the data, ultimate data, but use the learnings from that, the machine learning uh, algorithm from that and use it. Um, you know, use of differential privacy by using noise into the data and so on and so forth, right? The encryption uh, part of it. There are ways and means of taking care of the data protection. Um, and slowly and steadily, people are using this to ensure that the individual data, um, individual private data is protected. And we surely need to think about all of these when we are creating, building our uh, uh, AI, mo AI models and then eventually the AI solutions. Um, let me move on. Um, controllable AI with clear accountability. I'm going to touch upon this in detail, of, you know, when I'm talking about the frameworks, but I broadly, you know, it's important for us to have um, clear uh, thought process for why you're building what you're building for your business, right? Because most AI models, AI solutions that we are building today are for businesses. So there is there is need for us to clearly say who is accountable, who's who's who is the right delegation thing, and who's approving these things when you're creating it for the business. Regulatory questions we'll come about talk about uh, uh, in length as I told you, and then the robustness which I touched upon. So I will I will skim through this quickly, but we'll talk about this in a bit. Transparent and explainable AI again is the question, right? So we first talked about the privacy. Now coming to the transparency and explainability, again, it is not new to any one of you here when I'm saying that, you know, the new the, the neural net models or the deep learning models cannot be uh, traced back, right? So of course there are techniques now, I know, uh, but, uh, but largely we do have these issues. It is tough even with the newer, newer algorithms that are being built for this purpose. But having said that, right, um, do you really need to go behind every model that is built and see whether you know you, it needs to be explainable, right? Uh, how transparent it should be? All these are questions again somewhere linked back to the ethical questions that we talked about a little while back, right? So, so the question is, is this needed, right? The use in when I'm saying is this needed, the transparency and the explainability of the model is it required at all, and where is this required, right? Uh, if you are just talking about the search engine, right? which runs through all of your uh, data and spits out uh, you know, uh, the, the, the search outcomes, right? Maybe you don't need as much explainability for that purpose because it was anyways there and you would have just searched it out yourself. But as against uh, uh, use in the uh, medical uh, side of the world, right? Of decisioning with respect to the treatment plan, one should, one should think about it and whether we need the explainability uh, there is a question that I'm trying to bring here, right? I, again, I will spend more on the other aspects as well. Uh, eliminating the historical bias. Uh, if in the past, uh, you know, human be human uh, decisioning uh, for uh, giving a, a loan or for giving a credit card, etc., was based on uh, you know uh, gender bias, should it continue in the future, right? Or age bias, right? Should it continue in the future? These are the kind of questions that one should ask and you know take care of when, when you're thinking about creating a transparent and response explainable AI. Um, regulatory needs, of course, uh, unquestionable. In the banking, it is big. So you, you better get into those aspects and figure, out, figure it out very clearly. And the benefits. Now, I, well, I'm, I'm actually trying to always, uh, because we are already in the world where we have uh, all of these algorithms that are already running and without a question on the need for ethics or uh, anything right so so you always needs to need to need to think whether and balance always need versus benefit right cost of mistakes if the cost of mistakes um, that the ai solution would eventually do is going to be absolutely um, and the cost is not necessarily uh, you know mon monetary remember huh? it could be it could be anything it is societal it is impact on anything if that cost is going to be very high then you better have an explainability underneath right then the impact on the model bias and you know decision making itself informed decision making have those in mind and uh, you know therefore therefore 
the 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 levels of if i could use right the levels of uh, transparency and explainability could be with the simulatability right which is where a human can actually absolutely recreate the, the entire program right decomposability is every aspect of the model is every part of it explainable the data features i've used uh, 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 the uh, uh, algorithms i've used etc is it explainable is a question is that kind of a, a transparency is what i am looking for is a model behavior on the unseen data uh, needed to be explained then yes you need to go behind these things and there are many methods out there right uh, uh, the simple ones which are already used like the shapes and the lines of the world and then there is deep lift for the deep uh, deep learning algorithms etc one could be easily find the outputs but yes go behind that right and then the local explainability when i am saying the local explainability when the model actually goes ahead and scores every single data point uh, is there a need to say whether uh, uh, whether the whether the decisioning of the algorithm is needs to be explained at every individual line item wise ask these questions when building the ai solutions to be able to solve for it now coming to you know the carefully delimited impact right what do i mean by ai with the carefully delimited impact and this is where uh i start with the thought process of you know how do you ensure um uh, you know you steer clear of the ethical dilemmas right um when you start creating an ai solution so today 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 we all know we've gone past that stage of uh, experimentation um all organizations have already proved that there is there is value in going behind uh, ml models right for across their businesses that's not the question really the point now where we are right now is we are now looking at scaling the whole thing uh, implementing this across the organization and leading to the management management level decisioning basis ai system right and therefore it is important for us to carefully delimit delimit the impact right you need to one need to clearly say what is the goal you know create a digital contract of sorts uh, for every ai solution that you are building have in mind what is your ultimate goal that you are going to reach we are not talking about general ai uh, right we are talking about specific ai that at this point in time and 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 businesses are still looking at this um, so create create a goal of sorts right what is the strategy to achieve this goal have asked these questions when you are building ai solution first things first right so you got to get this digital contract right who is the driver who is the validator of this contract who is the guide for this whole thing right look at the constraints and those are very important today we are probably not thinking about it and it is it is absolutely critical for us when we embark upon this journey now this goals and this strategy should actually go drive your entire process of research design learning commissioning etc of the ai life cycle validation as you see in this thing now with all these things it should come and prove that the ai the, is is done the ai solution is created the way it has been defined i'll talk more about this about the balance that i'm talking about but, but this is this is extremely crucial it's extremely important for us right um create the boundaries see you know uh, rendered uh, human readable form that everything that you are doing is documented you are able to read at every point in time what decisioning who is responsible so on and so forth that is critical for us and limitations constraints and what are the limits and the constraints of the ai system that you are going to build so all of these and i'll talk as i said you know this is going to be the crux of the rest of the uh 10 minutes that i will be talking about right so now leaving to you know how ethics is built right so if those are the contours those are the pillars of uh, you know uh, building a, 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 an ethical uh, uh, ai system uh, what should one do right the question here is trust is important right ethics and trust are like two sides of the coin if you can uh, if you i am sure you know all of us agree it's not just for ai anywhere else now what do you trust the ai system to do is a question that all of us have to ask right um it is you know look for something of value with confidence that it is you know what do you trust to do it with now it's not just important that what am i going to entrust the ai system to do but how do i prove that the ai system is doing what it is supposed to do is a different question 
these are two sides of the uh, uh, coin and this is very critical right uh, i am thinking that you know the self self driven uh, car is going to uh, you know i am going to entrust this system with self driving uh, also right but whether it is actually doing it the manner you want it to and that it is avoiding um, uh, the ethical dilemmas avoiding the accidents and etc the way i originally envisaged it to do is another question that you need to, that is a validation point of it that i am talking about right so therefore the whole con uh, construct of creating a trusted ai framework to be a, to to put it into operation to ensure that you steer clear of all these ethical dilemmas so that is how i thought you know we could build the whole thing now we'll come to the uh, come to the contours of this uh, operationalizing uh, what you call a trusted ai right what are the what are the simple uh, easy to understand uh, actionable uh, framework items i thought that we could talk about we could think about uh, as we start building this whole thing um, and and it can become you know a sort of guide for people to go back and tick mark saying hey have i done this have i not done this because i think this is absolutely important uh, as we start building it's not just i and then you know our organization thinks the same way now coming to the most important thing on the left side human in control now all of the ai systems solutions that we are building today it is important that we have a human who is responsible for that it cannot be that an ai system is responsible for uh, detecting a fraud it cannot be that an ai system is on its own deciding on uh, on 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 uh, whom to give credit it is it cannot that it it cannot be that it decides whom to kill when you are driving the car for want of better uh, easier examples right there has to be a person responsible behind this right and who is responsible in and who is in control of the algorithm and signing off saying that hey this is what i am signing off signing this off for and we will look at each of the business regulatory robustness ethical angle for all of these purposes clear clear scope in place i talked about it a bit earlier data trust i'll talk uh, you know data trust is you know am i using a trusted data there are many parlance to it right one with respect to my own data in terms of the bias that has been seeped in the second is about using of the third party data so if you all know uh, i'm sure all of you work in the customer uh, first uh, space as well right so where we are already talking about algorithms to go and recommend to them um, you know um, uh, segmenting the customers so on and so forth but with all, to do all these things we depend on first party second party third party and then now people are talking about zero party data as well right uh, which is which is basically i go and accept myself saying that hey i'm okay to be reached out for these 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 purposes is the data trust worthy is a question uh, which we will see in terms of all of these lenses that i'm going to talk about and the continual validation as we move forward from the business regulatory robustness and uh, the ethical framework right so this is 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 the crux of what i really wanted to say uh, from all the setting of context and etc etc right so we talked about the human in control i'll go from left to right in terms of the sections right um clear accountability with respect to the business like who is the owner for the ai solution that i am building how do i delegate the authority if i am not there or who you know across the organization who are rest who are rest who is the person responsible for every aspect of the ai solution across their organization and then a human approval human approval right so every nowadays you know if you are really walking the path of a ai solution good ai solution uh, within the businesses we are talking about human intelligence incorporated into ai intelligence and this is a must in 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 our view in our view clearly right uh, regulatory accountable owner who will be the person who will, res will be responsible for saying hey i decided that this person is a fraud you know you need to know whom to go to have a full audit control and explainability which i talked about a little while back the robustness successful failure right so you should allow the system to successfully fail um uh, if it is not doing what it is supposed to do uh and not create further uh, damage to the whole thing how do you how do you ensure that that happens for your models chain of command and human override look at the thing from a clarity on purpose set clear objectives measures bounds for the business 
eliminating the bias and complaints and carbon impact for the regulatory purposes, and then the boundary, right, which we talked about a little while back. Data trust, I talked quite a bit. I am just skimming through to see whether I have done full lineage, blah, blah. I think I'm, it's, it's pretty clear uh, in terms of, uh, you know, how do you build a data trust when you're building a model eventually. And then the continual validation, right? Um, ensure that the ensure that there is no drift that is happening on the model after you've productionized the model into your uh, environment, right? Um, there could be model drift, data drift. I'm sure all of you know about it, but it is important for us to keep checking uh, where we stand with respect to all of these uh, potential post-productionization drifts. And then, of course, prove decisions and prove lack of bias and et cetera, et cetera. And then the last one, of course, you know, graceful degradation. I'm talking about successful failure here and the graceful degradation is basically meaning that when you're continually watching the model, if it is drifting, at what point in time should you decommission it? That decision is called, is what I'm calling about a graceful degradation. And then at that point in time, please pull the plug so that you can bring in the new set of models and for the new reality uh, that the world will be moving to. So, so just those, those things, uh, new other ideas of voting systems to ensure that your model is robust, right? So you, you could also look at champion challenger, so on and so forth. Now coming to the ethical lens uh, to, to, to each of the things, right? Ac accountability, purpose, uh, you know, basing decisions on reality and the vigilance, uh, always being vigilant. Uh, we talked about all of the three and, uh, you know, with respect to transparency, controllable AI, um, with clear accountability, right? AI respectful of the privacy and data pr protection, we, I, I spoke, spoke about it in length. Now, these are the various aspects, uh, you know, um, in, in my view, in our view, uh, if, you know, you should, one should take care with respect to building a framework when you are, when you are um, embarking upon the journey to create an AI solution for your organization. Now, there are steps which, again, we picked up, but these are, again, checklists, right? First, whatever I talked about, right? So justify the choice, have multiple stakeholders to validate the approach so that you're not uh, making any mistakes. Consider a re relevant regulatory body whom you would eventually be answerable to and think of those questions and answer it upfront. Uh, apply the risks and benefits assessment frameworks. Uh, you know, ensure that you have across the life cycle, not just at one point, because remember, uh, uh, you know, AI solutions have impact at every point in time. Uh, at the time you build the model, at the time you validate the model, at the time it is running in the production. Um, adopt user-centric approach. Uh, everything, uh, you know, with a human and, and the use of it uh, is centered upon the use. Uh, clearly lay out the risk prioritization, define the performance metrics and all the way, you know, operational rules, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these are kind of a checklist to ensure during the life cycle of the um, AI solution building that one can have in mind so that we, we, we steer clear of the ethical dilemmas that one would go through uh, before and after, of, after uh, building and implementation of the AI solutions. These are some of the uh, some of the publications I thought was interesting, which I had also gone through. Uh, I wouldn't say I went through everything, but I've, I've I've kind of touched upon some of these and read some of these and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, but I thought it was fascinating uh, that we could go behind. So with that, I think I'll come to an end of uh, my session, and I would want to hear from all of you and see what you are doing. Uh, uh, you know, and, and, and see how we can, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to more ideas. Yeah. Stop sharing. Very, very interesting. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was really interesting and comprehensive. So you touch all the relevant points in this scenario concerning the dilemmas created by AI. And we discussed quite a lot about similar things on the occasion of some conferences and Professor Rao knows uh, the discussion we had in Delhi about uh, what happens if two uh, autonomous vehicles will crash or are going to crash and the dilemmas about uh, how to uh, behave correctly on the moral and ethical side and so on and so forth. You get very close to some of the typical 
um, dilemmas that were shown by American fiction movies from 2001 Space Odyssey. You remember the computer, the AI system all, by chance IBM shifted one <laughs> charter that used to try to kill the equipage, so the people. And later on, uh, the other one that was nice was the uh, war games where you have to train uh, in real time the AI system to understand that there are no uh, victories, no, no people winning at such kind of game or war game. And then uh, more recently, there's the eagle eye again, you know, the, again, another idea that uh, uncontrolled use of AI without what you pointed out, that is the human uh, capacity to decommission or to control the, the, the system is crucial. Otherwise, the risk is to suffer similar things or on the real world, what happened in Japan some 20 or more years ago with the stock exchange, where the AI system start to uh, create a vicious circle, co collapsing the stock exchange. So I, it's very, very interesting in all the this kind of things and what you told us about the specific approach and the specific problems. And I really, really happy to be part of this. I have to thank Professor Rao who invited me. Okay, so thanks a lot. I think now it's time to open and there's already Galit uh, raising the hand. So please Galit, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you so much. You brought a really consistent framework and I really, really liked it. I was wondering when you, when you were describing it, I, I thought it was very much focused on organizations that are trying to build or implement AI systems. And I'm wondering uh, whether you have a similar model for regulators who are trying to protect citizens uh, in case, you know, not all the companies are following your, you know, your model and the good advice. Let's admit it, some of them, they don't. <clears throat> so maybe, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Is there any model for regulators it's a fantastic question, Galit. Uh, so, so okay. So the quick answer to it is we can build together. I don't think I have a, because the, again, if you look at it, Galit, um, uh, regulators, it's not a it's not a single stroke that you know it's a regulator, right? For an insurance regulator, would be very different from uh, different regulators. So we need to really go through these layers of which regulator are we talking about and therefore what should they have in mind of course banking regulators do have it very easy um, already because all of their models have to be explainable but beyond explainability there could be others in terms of uh, you know testing of biases etc i'm not sure how much of it is implemented on the ground but, but this is something that we will need to create. There are lots of work which are already happening uh, with respect to regulatory uh, frameworks for assessing ethical uh, dilemmas, uh, but this needs to be brought in and we could, we could, we could con converse upon it and build. But it just, in some form or fashion, a corollary or uh, what is being talked about from a business perspective, you use the similar other side of the world lens and kind of reach uh, the business. Right, so yeah, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. I would love to have your slides if possible and your email address so we can continue this uh, discussion. I that would be really, really I've good. shared this with Dr. Rao and he will be. I second here. this. Thank <laughs> you. This request, yes, thank you. Now give the floor to our friend. Sorry, I don't remember how to read the second charter of your name, so it's D and then the C. <laughs> It's with Javdiat Sulimanov, yeah? Javdiat? Javdiat Sulimanov. Javdiat Sulimanov, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes Sulimanov. Yes. <laughs> just, okay. just now I'm from, from, just now I'm from Spain, but uh, uh, really I live in uh, Russia. Uh, it's very interesting. It's my theme for <laughs> a lot, lot of uh, years. 
uh, the especially interesting moment is uh, uh, developing uh, not only artificial intelligence, but uh, developing, uh, realizing uh, artificial intelligence is uh, uh, expl exp uh, explanatory. Uh, understandable, yeah. understandable. Did you change, uh, change, change to artificial our... intelligence. No. And so uh, my question is, everyone. Uh, I, uh, no, no. I want to say that uh, the, the report yeah. was very, very That's interesting. Everyone for uh, meeting. Very really interesting. Yes. No. Sorry, my, so my... mic. Someone is is speaking on on the speaker <laughs> voice. So okay. I ask to the participant to switch off the mic, otherwise. Our yeah. friend is unable to complete the intervention. Sorry, please yeah. go ahead. My 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 question is, <clears throat> what do you think uh, about the my question to the lecturer? Uh, what do you think this about uh, think about the possibility uh, possibilities of using natural language, natural languages, uh, mentality, structures, lexical, uh, grammatical potential? For data presentation and data processing in artificial intelligence, and uh, uh, what, do, what do you think about the possibilities uh, using uh, this models, uh, natural language uh, structure models for presentation, formalization of the subconscious subconscious of artificial intelligence? It will be. Uh, I think that maybe it is the way uh, to constructing, to developing the understandable artificial intelligence, explainable artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. What do you think about? Well, I'm totally with you, right? There are there are ways and means of, especially language models. I understand where you're coming from. It's absolutely complex. Um, the context is very critical. I agree with you. With my thoughts, <laughs> I'm uh, totally. I, 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 nobody can, nobody can say no to it, right? It, it has to be. Uh, it, it is, it is true what you're saying. Um, there are, you know, um, there are methods to do this. Um, uh, in terms of, you know, we also use to get it more contextual, etc. More graphical way of representation, right? Knowledge graphs is a big thing where you could actually go and figure out the context and then double click and get in. But there are, it is important. There is need for, but the framework would still apply if you're actually going through the whole step, if you can imagine what I'm you know, trying to say. But, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to ask you uh, is it, uh, if, it's, uh, if is it possible, if it's possible to continue a conversation about this theme, uh, about the using uh, natural language, Structures uh, uh, in artificial intelligence. Absolutely, yeah. it'll be nice to converse with you outside of this as well to understand your thoughts further, and then and then we can. Th 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 thank you, thank you for the char charming report. Thank you, thank you. So now I give the floor to Cordell Green. He raised the hand. Yes, thank you very much. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, Padma Shri. I am probably. I might be the only non-academic <laughs> on this call. And, and, and so I want to congratulate you for an excellent uh, presentation. If only the principle of um, AI explainability um, could, could be as effective as your presentation, we would, we would have accomplished a lot. I, I, I want to ask you a question about this notion of continual validation and the multi-stakeholder approach, which you identified as characteristics for building trust on the side of the business. Does that imply openness to concepts such as multiple independent and adversarial testing of AI systems, especially high risk systems and i know you have to you have to balance that against security of of the asset but i'm interested in in how you would strike the balance 
Um, I see that as a dilemma. Absolutely, Gordon. You said it right, right? So um, most, most of, in fact, in the banking models, there, is, there are independent uh, risk models, basically, I'm talking about. There are independent authorities who come, run, validate the models every periodically, uh, right? Periodically, it is done. But it is only restricted to banking uh, risk models at this point in time. Uh, beyond that, um, there is an absolute need for uh, this wherever it is going to impact uh, human uh, in whatever form or fashion. And we will need to start looking at, you know, um, what kind of audit. Uh, we do, you know, we recommend always that when the production thing is in the production, you do have to have audits. Um, whether it is independent or within the organization, et cetera, et cetera, will depend on the uh, cost, as I told you, right? The cost not necessarily in terms of the monetary thing, but the cost to life, the cost to society, et cetera, et cetera. Depending on the level of uh, impact, it is important for us to decide and uh, that whether you want an external uh, uh, audit engine uh, to be run on the models. Yes, you're, you're absolutely right. Thank you very much for your response. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it was, thank you for the wonderful lecture because one, two, it's a very good talk and there are too many ideas. I think in a short presentation is difficult to uh, explore uh, much more, but uh, I think each uh, section can be a long lecture and a long talk and it is one excellent. And I'm not, uh, I'm a basically a social anthropologist. And uh, my uh, understanding is, you see, when you are talking about all these, these are possibly for more urban, more, uh, you know, larger systems, mm -hmm. rather than to those who are largely not either semi-literate or illiterate. Mm -hmm. For those sections who get influenced or who get impacted by AI, how are we trying to justify their lives without consulting them in the process of defining? <laughs> because this is this is the basic because there are large sections. For a larger sections of population, how do we involve when you are trying to develop or generate algorithms? This is my dilemma. Thank you. No, you're totally right. I, you, if you remember, I started with one of the things called ethical data sourcing. It is exactly this. We don't even know where we are used. Right. That's the unfortunate thing uh, many a times, uh, right? So I, 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 I can only agree with you. And, and, but all of these frameworks, if you start using it, um, you know, you can't go and ask this question to each individual in the world uh, you know, whether, whether, you know, where your data is used, et cetera, et cetera. But the only way we can control it is when you're building it, if you're using these set of frameworks, you would have done a large part of, uh, uh, you know, taking care of, you know, uh, such issues is what uh, is the, is the thing that we can walk the path right now. Is it, is it possible to work with those groups mm -hmm. uh, so that you get their perspectives so that you can build into the algorithms. Great. It is, it is absolutely possible. It is absolute. And there are, uh, you know, the government uh, led, some good government led organizations which are creating these uh, algorithms, uh, sir. Uh, they, do, they do take feedback input on these things, right? Um, uh, but yeah, uh, it's a very fair point. Very fair point. So. Thank you. Good. Oh, so, there's so, another. Oh, Marius, raise the hand. Please, Marius. Uh, what is yours? I'm, thank you. Uh, grazie mille. Maybe I think it's Professor uh, Rao and his colleagues who want to intervene first. Maybe. Uh, yes, yes so, it's, uh, this, is, this is Atul Negi. I'm uh, Professor Rao's colleague. I work in artificial intelligence and uh, computer science. And uh, so you can say maybe I'm. Uh, somewhat um, closer to Padmasri in, in this aspect. Uh, so uh, what, what I would like to say is that uh, there are certain standards which are there for software engineering. 
Say, for example, we have the uh, Carnegie Mellon Institute, uh, CMM maturity models. There are, there are five stages of those models. Okay. So if you wish to build AI-based products, we already have some kind of a framework of the process, building up a process. Okay. Uh, so these are some aspects. Another thing which I would like to say is that uh, IEEE, that is the, it is the worldwide uh, well-known professional body, wherein uh, there it's a, uh, they already have a lot of thought devoted to AI and ethics, and they are coming out with one kind of a standard, a standardization, which is a proposed standard, and uh, that is already being uh, uh, um, um, brought on. So that is called as the IEEE P7001 standard on transparency. Okay, and uh, there's already work going on in the um, uh, Bristol Robotics Laboratory in Bristol in UK. Uh, work is going on also in the uh, MIT in Cambridge and uh, other such places. Okay, so uh, some work is already in, in, in place on these standards. Okay, so the important aspect is that uh, the industry has come to some understanding on that to formulation of the standards and see that the standards are followed and that there are, uh, if, if, if somebody is trying to buy an AI product or trying to use an AI product, we must ask the questions that, you know, how was it built? What kind of regulatory aspects are there in, in you know, uh, uh, building it? Okay, so uh, maybe some awareness and, and the, uh, you know, some regulations on the standards for building such AI software is, is required and to be uh, universally adopted. Okay, that's that's the point I wish to make. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. Please, Marius. Okay, thank you very much. Um, you know very well I'm from the legal branch and uh, this my uh, observation is also uh, connected with Professor Wellner. She was saying something about regulations. Uh, let's be honest. Uh, we can have maybe a global technological standard for artificial intelligence. Maybe we can try to develop an ethical global standard, but believe me, it's impossible to create in on these years, on these decades, a, a global legal standard for artificial intelligence. There are two different traditions. There are two different uh, um, ideas and um, in fact, instruments in every country, in some countries, legislation is just a tool in the hand of politicians. In other countries, uh, legislation is a tool who protects somehow the citizens. In some, in some countries, legislation is a part who separates religion by uh, citizens. Yes, for example, in some countries like, I don't know, Iran or something. So uh, in this kind of uh, different painting, legal painting, it's almost impossible to have uh, and to create a real and uh, coherent uh, legal framework on a global level. So I think it's, uh, it will be not just impossible, but uh, we should expect to somehow to not very pleasant behavior from some countries, but it will be very legal according with their legal standards. Yes, but not legal with the standards of other countries. And it will be somehow, in, it will be, you know, like uh, speaking in, in the deserts. Yeah. Okay. You have right. You have right. But the practice is like this. Thank you very much. It's, it's sad. It's not uh, optimist. But from the legal point of view, I see more or less this kind of dark clouds. Sorry for that. Uh, Thank you very you much, Marius. Yeah, I... And uh, sorry, please reply to you. No, no, there is no, it is not a response, but I... You know, the truth is somewhere in between. I, I, I agree, right? Uh, when I'm saying the truth is somewhere in between, um, whilst we should continue to walk the path of, you know, solving, you can't solve the world hunger. That's impossible, right? It's, if I can bring that analogy here, um, you, can't, you can't solve for this at all because we've gone far too ahead uh, to be able to think back. I completely agree with you. But at the same time, it is uh, if you can bring out these frameworks and uh, see largely at least the corporates and where you can go ahead and 
see a way to impact, we should try and do it is my simple thought process. Uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it's a tough one. Can't disagree. Good. Thank you. And Thank now there's another resident by Aya. Uh, again, sorry. Uh, sorry, it's, uh, yes. I didn't change my mind. I'm Alexander Friedman. Uh, for, uh, I didn't change my name in, in English. No, no, Alexander. I'm Alexander you, Friedman uh, from, from Russia. Yes. And, uh, I'm already thankful, also thankful to Professor Rao for interesting talk. But uh, I want to share my doubts about the uh, general uh, direction of uh, AI development. Uh, you know that uh, the Bible did manage to bring ethics to life for a couple of uh, thousand years. Why do you believe that we can do it now? And uh, when we are talking about explainable and uh, understandable AI, you surely know that uh, neural nets are not explainable in principle and they will never be explainable as far as I understand. And uh, that's, that's my big question. I really doubt about it and wanted to share you, to, to learn your opinion. Uh, to my mind, the only real way to uh, control uh, uh, artificial intel intelligence is to limit its uh, abilities to, to specialize uh, AI systems to solving very narrow and con concrete uh, uh, tasks, not to, to, to strive for general AI, because it's very dangerous and uncontrollable to my mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, yes. Um, Interesting. I, what can you say about this? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree with you, but it is the same thing you started saying, right? So we have gone past that. There are people who are already working on uh, artificial general insurance, uh, intelligence. Um, you know, there's only so much that you can, um, you know, um, control or influence. Uh, that is where the whole question of, you know, where do you bring the balance? Where should, you know, is this a war that you can win, right? And then break it down into smaller sections and see if you want to, uh, you know, uh, control those aspects. That, that's, that's, the, that's the question of balance that I've been talking about from the beginning, right? You can't explain everything. Is there a need for it? I don't even think so, right? So therefore, go and figure out whether there is a need for it, cost for it, and then do it, right? So break down the whole thing into smaller chunks and then see if we can solve those chunks, right? Uh, we, cannot, we cannot solve for everything and it is all out there, right? There is, you can't, you can't just do this ev everywhere. It is, it is an approach. It's for us to see whether we want to use it or not use it. It's up to us. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? And raise it. Let me check. No, I don't see any other. And raise it. No more questions. In the meantime, I would like to tell you something. Uh, so I think I think Professor Kudze Bester, oh. Professor Kudze Bester has asked if he is still there. Sorry, Professor Kudze Bester from South Africa. Uh, because I don't see any but, other. Please, please. Uh, Proceed, Professor. Is he there? Because I don't see any any uh, resident, but okay. Then may, may, may I make a couple of observations? If he's not there, please. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Padmasri for her very fascinating uh, presentation, which has actually raised a very hard debate and a hard discussion. Uh, just I would like to make a couple of observations. Uh, when we talk about uh, biases uh, and two types of biases you were uh, talking about, one is algorithmic and algorithm and another one is data. These both the biases are controlled, created and controlled by human beings, isn't it, humans? So if we can control, are, are, are arrays 
the bias at algorithmic level or data collection level, then there will not be any problem. So that's why we need a policy, not only for A, for algorithms also, because if we can control the bias at the algorithmic level, there will not be any problem. Okay, even in data collection also, when we talk about whether it is structured or unstructured data, we know from methodology also that when we collect data, the, the data should not be biased, isn't it? So if we have, if we can control at algorithmic level and bias level, then, and, and data level, <coughs> bias, this bias, then automatically the A will be free from any bias. That is number one. Number two, when we talk about ethics also, ethics are socio-cultural specific. So there are, of course, universal ethics, but there are individual cultural ethics. And these ethics are socio-cultural uh, specific ethics. So uh, there is a need to construct, build local AIs, AIs, okay? along with global AI. So the local AI should be based on local language, number one, and on local ethics. Then it is also easy to control bias, number one. And number two, when we build a local AIs, then we can more effectively solve local problems rather than global problems. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Rao. So uh, if I may, I would like to invite uh, all of you to attend the session that will be held next week on Friday within the WISIS framework, so the ITU WISIS framework. And this session is dealing more or less with similar things. So the title is uh, Digital Entrapment, and it takes uh, let's say, the opportunity to talk about the different uh, risks the different uh, problems related to the use of new technologies and the pervasive use of uh, specific technologies such as the, the um, biometrics or the uh, opportunity to track positions and so on in infringing some values such as privacy and much more even security. So uh, if Professor Rao loves, I, I will send to him the, the invitation and to share this among the participant to this interesting panel. And of course, for the speaker of the panel, so if she is interested in contributing, uh, explaining the, some of the points she uh, described today concerning the, the different risks connected to uh, the use of AI or unregulated AI, I think uh, this will be very welcome. So I think now the, the whole thing I suppose is over. So again, I, I thank very much Professor Rao for this invitation. It was a very nice idea to set up a similar group of experts and to hear from different standpoints from the legal one, from Marius and from the, the academic one and researcher one, and uh, the, the lady that has a long uh, curriculum in, in the field of technology and to make the point and to point out many other, many interesting aspects, putting together the different sides, the social one, the, the, the technological one, the freedom, let's say one and so on. So thank you very much to all of you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Professor Alfredo Ranchi, for your uh, very uh, uh, what, what I say, very, very perfect management of uh, the session, and and uh, and thanks for accepting to be to preside over this session. Of it course, was my I honor, would, my pleasure. Thank you, sir. Uh, I once again thank uh, Padmasri for ac immediately accepting. Uh, the, the the invitation to speak today, and with a big clap, we we say thank to you. Thank you, thank you, madam, 
uh, and and we hope that uh, uh, this this as I said, uh, this meeting is uh, uh, not only to share our research, but to work out so as as much as possible some bilateral and multilateral collaborations. And and before we close uh, our our meeting today, may I request uh, Dorothy Gordon to to speak a couple of uh, words. Hi, Dorothy. Put, putting me on the um, hot seat, Professor Rao. I can only congratulate Padma Shri. I think that the ideas that you've put out here should be shared more widely. So I'm glad that we have the recording and I'm hoping that uh, the slides also will be circulated with the recording. And once you have the link, please tell us so that we can broadcast that link and make sure that more people are aware. We need more people to be thinking about these issues. And Professor Rao, you talked about localized AI, but I want to remind all of us that essentially we're talking about a very tricky border between business and the impact on society. And unfortunately, business is about making money. And if you go too local, you make less money. So we are gonna to have to figure out how that's going to work in practical ways. And then the other thing I want to say is we shouldn't attempt to have a one size fits all solution. I think, as I said, more people thinking around it and gradually we will get to solutions that are appropriate for the different contexts. Thank you so much, Padma Shri, and um, keep up the good work. And thank you all, especially my dear friend, Alfredo, for excellent sharing. And as usual, uh, IFAP partners all around the world for participating. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you, Madam. Thank you very much. Just quickly, uh, Dorothy Gordon is uh, chair, uh, Information for All program, UNESCO. She is a renowned scholar in, in and, and also she is very much promoting and encouraging all of us to, to promote IFAP objectives in different countries. So uh, she, is, she is our guru, so simply speaking. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for, for joining this. <laughs> Not a guru. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for joining this evening. Yeah. Padma Shri, would you like to say something? I just wanted to say thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. yeah. So Shri, I'm waiting for you at the panel at the ITU and WISIS forum next week. Okay, I think I will share the invitation with Professor Rao and then it's up to you and to all the participants to be part of this one hour, let's say, discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. You, so before, you, bye, bye. Before, yeah, before we say bye, uh, just I want to make an announcement that next meeting will be on 17th May at 17 hours IST, India time. So please block your day, date. Uh, up, uh, we will send the invitation in due course. Thank you very much. I thank all the participants for participating uh, this evening. I mean to say in India it is evening. So this evening, and we, I hope that with all your support, we will take forward the objectives of this consortium. Thank you and have a nice week tomorrow here. It is a holy, the festival of colors in India. So we have a long weekend and, and uh, we, we, we wish all the best to you, all of you. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.